Ça va être un petit peu de temps. Ça va être un petit peu de temps. Hey, welcome everybody to McKee Stadium in West Hartford as the War Chief Sports Council and WHC TV proud to present West Hartford High School Sports. Tonight, the Connor Chieftains host the co-op team of Buckley and Weaver. Well, hi again, Pete Lammer, along with Chris Grace and our fine crew led by Jen Evans back in the studio as the Chieftains come in at 5-2 and two in the hunt for a playoff berth in double L. If they can run the table, that means the win tonight and then victories over both Newington and Hall. Bats are Sosmo's team comes off a 38-14 win at Simsbury and led by their fine tailback Nate Richam already over 100, over 1,000 yards on the ground and a good aerial attack led by Declan Flaherty who had a season high 163 yards through the year last week in the win over Simsbury. As for Buckley, a season marred by injuries. The Bulldogs come in at 0-7 on the year, but they get their best player back tonight as quarterback Kevin Saylor's been out since the opener with a foot injury that he suffered against New Britain. Still, Pablo Ortiz remains optimistic about his club. Ortiz in his sixth year at the helm of his alma mater, but uh, Chris, as we look at the game tonight, certainly Buckley comes in with a tall mountain to climb here. Yeah, you know, it's never a fun place to be, Pete, as the underdog like that, but um, that's why they play the game, and each game is an individual opportunity for those guys to leave their mark. I was personally part of a program that didn't win a lot of games, but I vividly remember every second of that one game that we did win, and it's an opportunity for those guys to experience a similar feeling tonight. Our national anthem. our national anthem at McKee Stadium as performed by the pep band here at Connard High School. As we said, the Chieftains 5-2 and two on the season. They come off a 38-14 win at Simsbury. The only two losses on the campaign, the drubbing that they took at the hands of Southington 53-25 two weeks ago, and then that controversial loss to Glastonbury back in week two by the count of 50 to 49. Second year at the helm for Matt Sersasimo, who succeeded his very successful dad, and very ironic that uh, dad stays on the staff after 30 years at the helm. I had a chance to talk with Matt the other night about that, and Chris, he said it's just the coolest thing in the world. He had a great run at UConn, did Matt, of course. He was the wide receivers and DB coach for so long, but uh, coach with your dad, that's something special. Yeah, it's really something that most people don't get to experience, and I can't imagine what that's like for Coach Sosimo. And when it comes to his father, football's a great game, and I'm sure it's just hard for him to get away because he wants to be there watching his son and to be involved with the process that he was a process, uh, he was involved with for 30 years. All in the family because before him it was his father-in-law, Matt's grandfather, and then, of course, Matt taking over. It's only the third time that they've had a different coach in Conard history. The Chieftains will be kicking off dressed in their traditional red home unis. And moving from left to right here in the opening quarter, Finn Cahill has it teed up at the 40-yard line, getting set to boot it away. And 
and the kick and we're underway as it's fielded by one of the up guys at the 29 yard line his knee definitely went down to the turf and that's where Buckley will put it in play first down and 10. The Bulldogs have had a lot of upheaval in terms of their offense. Two of their best players, Josh Ward and Kevin Saylor, have been out long term so far this year. It'll be interesting to see which of them play tonight. Both were listed as game time decisions by Pablo Ortiz in his sixth year as the head coach at his alma mater. He played for the Bulldogs back in 1979 through 83. First down and 10 at the 30-yard line. Spread attack with two wides to either side. Single setback. Ryan Support back hands off and about a three-yard advance as they cross the 35. Even more so than that, up to about the 37-yard line. And it'll be second down and long after the carry by Andrew Redway. Yeah, nice play to start the, start the night off for the Bulldogs. And uh, when you're a team that struggled, you want to have positive steps, and that's a good first step, gain a couple yards, stay in front of the chains, and uh, try to get something positive going early. Six foot four is the quarterback, Lyons, who makes his sixth consecutive start in replacement of Kevin Saylor, the junior, who, as we talked about, was injured back in week one. Spotted at the 36, second down and nine. And the handoff again. Redway going to his right and Good defensive pressure by the Connor Chieftains. Left side of that defensive front. And they stack him up. It'll be third down and long. Yeah, that time they brought double-A gap pressure right up the middle, Pete. And they overwhelmed the offensive line from the Bulldogs and were able to stop him behind the line, setting up a third down and very long on the first possession of the football game. Nick Kramus, Dylan Forsberg, Owen Hendricks up front for the Chieftains. Zach Bohm, Lucas DeSellis, Tyler Carson, and Stephen Bentz at the linebacker position. Sequan Small, Carson Rio, Bobby Iverson, and Kyle Pena-Green comprise the secondary for Matt Sousasimo's team. It's a third and ten for the Bulldogs at the 35-yard line. Straight drop by the quarterback. Now he's going to keep it. Running to his right as Lions crosses to the middle of the field, crosses the 40 out to about the 41-yard line. He's going to be brought down about four yards shy of the first down. It's fourth down upcoming for the Bulldogs. Nice uh, first series defensively for Connard. It looks like they're going to force a punting situation. It's fourth and about a four, and it, it does look like their punting unit is on, Pete. So one for one for the Connard defense as they try to uh, start this game out solid tonight here in West Hartford. So they're going to get set to boot it away, and the kicking problem continues for this uh, Buckley team. They've had the three different punters so far this year, and uh, we'll see. How they're able to boot it away here from the 45-yard line. And it's a low-line drive kick. And it's going to be fielded at the 32 on the return across to the far side of the field and down at the 38-yard line as it was Byron Jones on the return that time. And it'll be first down and 10 for the Connor Chieftains. We talked about their offensive attack. It's a good one led by Declan Flaherty at quarterback. They'll have uh, Nate Richam, the 1,000-yard rusher in the backfield. Byron Jones, Jack Ryan, and Kwasan Banks are the wide receivers. Up front for the Chieftains, the center is Josh Henry. The guards are Connor Swanton and Josh Agosto. The tackles are Michael Tweet and Phil Simplicio. First down and 10 for the Chieftains at their own 39-yard line. The ball spotted far side of the field. Play action, fake, throw goes to the near side. This is Jones, tries to step out of a tackle, and he gets across the 35 out to the 37-yard line. Good lateral pursuit that time by the Buckley defense there, Chris. Yeah, so far the Bulldogs look like they're fired up and ready to play, Pete, and you've got to admire them coming out. Of course, we said they're 0-7, but they're coming out ready to play tonight. And why not? It's a Friday night. The lights are on. Go out and give your best shot. And have some fun, as uh, you talked about. That's exactly what uh, head coach Pablo Ortiz told me on the phone the other night. He said, hey, Take the bright lights and uh, just enjoy ourselves. Pass again to Jones to the near side. And a good defensive pursuit. Gerald Strums, number four, came over and made the stop that time. And that's going to force a third down and long. Yeah, again, it seems like Buckley is on the smaller side, but they have small, quick guys. So when you throw it on the perimeter like that, you may play into their strengths. I would look for Connor to be a little bit more physical attacking as the game moves on. Ryan to the near side, Jones to the far side, quarterback, keeper, straight up the middle is Flaherty in the Buckley territory, breaking tackles, crosses the 50, crosses the 40, and he's down to about the 31-yard line. Big third down conversion, big play there, gain of 30 and a first down. Yeah, there was nothing really complicated about that, Pete. It was just a quarterback draw, and Flaherty had tons of room to run going across midfield and setting up Connor for the first score of the night. First and 10 down at the 32-yard line. 
So the third down conversion, keeping the drive alive with two wides to either side. Single setback, first carry. This is Dorfman off the right side. He gets inside the 30-yard line, and he's brought down there by Trayvon Allen, the sophomore. Very young team that this Buckley team has, Chris. A lot of sophomores, a lot of juniors as they build for the future. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of youth out there, but they're, they're all flying around the ball trying to make plays. Play action fake, and the throw to the far side was tipped. It was intended for Byron Jones, and it goes incomplete, and it will be third down and six. Andre Lyons, who's the starting quarterback, also plays linebacker. He has terrific speed, and he's six foot four, and he can be a dominant presence along that defensive front for the Buckley Bulldogs. So Connor trying for their second straight third down conversion. It's third and six at the Buckley 28-yard line. And again, the handoff goes to Dorfman. Tries to break out of a tackle, but he's wrapped up and brought down. Number 66 leading the defensive charge, Sam Rodriguez. Another sophomore made the stop, and it's fourth down. Fourth down and about four at about the 25-yard line. So Flaherty. Look to the near sideline to head coach Sassimo for the play. They go with trips to the far side of the field. Single wide out to the near side is number four, Jack Ryan, who comes off back-to-back 120-yard receiving days. Long snap count. They fake the handoff and brought down number five, Andre Lyons, with the tackle right there. And that's going to turn it over on downs. First and ten the other way. There you go. A great example of why you play the game, Pete. It looks like a mismatch on paper, but no one told the Bulldogs that. And they came out on that first drive with passion on defense. And that's where passion shows on the defensive side of the ball. Who wants it more? And on that play in particular, they wanted it more. And it was a big play by Lions to get the ball back for the Bulldogs early. He's been the best player for head coach Pablo Ortiz on both sides of the ball. He's a quarterback and a tight end on offense, and he's a menacing presence as a linebacker defensively. So at the 26-yard line, first down and 10 for the Buckley Weaver co-op team after they forced the turnover on downs. Long snap count, and here's the handoff. Trying to spin straight ahead and out to the 30-yard line for about a couple of yards. And it's the middle of that counter defensive front able to bring them down. And it'll be second down and long upcoming. Clock running, 7.20 to play opening quarter. And still no score. Bentz was among those leading the charge that time defensively for the Chieftains. No success on first down again, Chris. No, it's been tough sledding for both teams here early on the uh, opening down. But it's still another opportunity for Buckley to try to make a statement here early. Second down and eight at the 30-yard line. Two wides to either side. Single setback to the right of the quarterback as he surveys the defense. Tavon Patterson now in the backfield to the quarterback's right. Straight drop for Saylor. Throws over the middle. It's incomplete. Well over the head of the intended receiver, Gerald Strums. He was the junior. And uh, too high, too long, and it'll be third down and long. That's Sailor's first pass, by the way, in a month and a half as Irison is back and covers that time for Connor. It didn't look like the passing game was really uh, on all cylinders there, Pete. It looked like um, he was covered and the ball was very uncatchable. But it's a third down and another opportunity for the Bulldogs here early and an opportunity for Connor to really assert their authority in this game that we haven't seen the fight and the intensity quite early yet from the Chieftains. Yeah, time for the defense to make a big-time statement right here and force the second punt of this opening quarter. Sailor again remains at quarterback. They've used two QBs already in the opening five minutes of this first quarter. Takes a snap, straight drop, back to pass. Wants to throw deep. Right side has single coverage. Incomplete. They had the receiver at the 35-yard line. Andre Lyons, who had started the game at quarterback, he's the big play receiver and just had the ball off his fingertips. That was a matter of just a few inches too far, Chris. That was a beautifully thrown ball, and it, it literally was just a matter of inches. And you'd have to say that if Lyons could have that one over again, he would think he should have caught the ball. Great opportunity goes by the wayside for the for the Bulldogs, and they're going to have to punt again here, Pete. Two possessions, two punts, forced by the Chieftain defense. So they get set to boot it away. The first one was certainly an adventure. It's only traveled about 10 yards in the air. They got about a 15 or 20 yard roll out of it. And we'll see better effort forthcoming here. Good. 
Long snap, got almost a delay game. High snap. Quarterback, the punter has it blocked. It's picked up by the Chieftains, and they go into the end zone. Touchdown, Connor. Nick Kramus was able to get through there. Three guys converged after the bad snap by the center. The punter tried to control it, and by the time he tried to boot it away, Kramus was able to get through, pick it up, and go in for the game opening score at the 635 mark of this first quarter. Yeah, Pete, that was a disaster from the start. It was a bad snap. They took too long uh, getting the snap off. It allowed Connor to really jump over center there. And uh, it got from bad to worse as there were four chieftains coming after him. And it just so happened that Kramus was the guy who was lucky enough to scoop that one up and take it in for the first score of the game. So here's Cahill, who's 34 for 34 in his PAT so far this year. Ball is placed down. Kick is on the way. And it is good. So a timeout on the field with 6.35 to go in the opening quarter. It's a special teams play that has Connor on the board first. Connor seven, and the Buckley Co-op team nothing as you watch West Hartford High School Sports here on WHC-TV. The War Chief Sports Council would like you to join us for a celebration of high school athletics Saturday, November 14th, one week from tomorrow. It will take place at the West Hartford Town Hall Auditorium from 6.30 to 10.30. It's $50 a person, $20 for head coaches, includes food and drink, catering by Russell's Entertainment and a silent auction as well. Purchase your tickets today at warchief.net, tailgate.html, or mail your payment to War Chief Sports Council, P.O. Box 270574, West Hartford, Connecticut, 06127 0574. The tailgate party, one week from tomorrow at the West Hartford Town Hall auditorium the west hartford war chief sports council would like to thank its sponsors at the mvp level etna life and casualty and west hartford baseball etna and west hartford baseball mvp level sponsors of the war chief sports council kale has a teed up at 40 yard line getting set to boot it away after the game opening touchdown. Low line drive kick, angle to the far side, fielded at the 25. Across the 30, across the 40, out to about the 43 yard line. Another good return by the Bulldogs. And hey, Chris, they can't complain about their field position. They'll start first and 10, about seven yards shy of midfield. Yeah, and you know, Pete, after seeing that last series of downs they had on offense, I think that Lyons is going to be a go to guy. He really separated himself on that deep go route. I would look for them to earlier than later to try to attack the countered secondary deep again and maybe try to take a big shot and make a huge play on one individual play. Talented kid, he's six foot four, so he can certainly exploit the height advantage, and he has terrific speed, as we saw there. Got behind the one-on-one -on -one coverage on that last play on the previous series. Sailor, the quarterback, first and ten. Farhash at the Buckley 44-yard line. Two wides to either side, single set back to his right, throws to the near side, is complete to Strums. 45, 50, he's gone. 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Gerald Strums on a 56-yard touchdown scamper off the receiving end of the pass from Sailor. And 18 seconds after the Chieftain score, there's the answer from Buckley. They're an extra point away from tying this game at 7. Boy, oh boy, can Gerald Strum. Look at him go in the open field. What an impressive effort by the flanker. And he showed off some serious speed out there, Pete. And they're just an extra point away from tying this. And something tells me they might go for two here and avoid the avoid the PAT and try to shock the Chieftains here early. Kicking game's been very, very erratic. And they can make a statement, take their first lead here halfway through this opening quarter. Two wides to either side. Sailor, the quarterback, out of the gun. Out to third wide receivers. They put Josh Ward, the senior running back, in a slot to the right. Taking the snap, rolling to his right is Sailor. Throws back across, and he has the two-point conversion. And that's number one, Josh Ward, who lined up in the right slot that time. And there it is, an 8-7 lead with 6-17 to go here in the opening quarter. The War Chief Sports Council would also like to thank its sponsors at the all-state level. Dave Newman Photography, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reed PC Counselors at Law, 
ESPN, the West Hartford Youth Basketball League, the West Hartford Girls Lacrosse League, the Connor PTO, and Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gibson. Thanks one and all, the World Chief Sports Council with the production of tonight's game, and thanks to all the sponsors involved here. 8-7 with 6-17 to go in the opening quarter. You know, Pete, we talked before the game just briefly about what a challenge, what an uphill challenge it was for this Bulldog team, but I'll tell you what, this coaching staff has to be fired up. They came out ready to play. They had a big fourth down stop, and then they responded to the adversity of the block punt by scoring on the first play and going 60 yards. So you've got to feel pretty good if you're a member of this coaching staff and if you're a member of this Bulldog team because they're up a point, 8-7. We're halfway through the first quarter here. It's an impressive performance early by, by this uh, Bulldog team. And an impressive coach too, Chris. I had a chance to talk to Pablo Ortiz and the... the 60-year head coach talked about the fact that his kids are just so resilient. They've had so many injuries. They come back from it time and time again. And uh, he's the only coach to lead them to a five-win season in the last 25 years, and they certainly play to that type of level. Here's Jones on the return, and he crosses the 30 and uh, gets out to about the 31-yard line. Tavon Patterson among those in on the stop on special teams for Buckley, and it will be first 10, 10 coming up for the Connor Chieftains. It's going to be very important to see how Connor uh, addresses this next drive, Pete. Although they did score a touchdown, it was on special teams. So their offense is still looking to get it going. They had that one big run by the quarterback. But for them, they have to establish an identity early in this game and really put their foot on the gas and try to put away a team that is yet to find a victory this season. And outscored in the process 266-66. to 66. So a lot of the games they really haven't been in. First down and off, plenty of running room as that is Richard who crosses the 40-yard line out to the 41. Number five, Andre Lyons, who's been a factor on both sides of the ball for the Bulldogs, brings him down as they have a player down at the 41-yard line. And it's Tavon Patterson, who is the injured player for Buckley. So Patterson and Lyons came over to combine on the stop, and it's Patterson who's going to be attended to here at the 6.03 mark of the opening quarter. Gives us time to tell you that on Wednesday night, November 25th at 7 o'clock at the Hall High School Auditorium, there'll be a presentation of the film entitled Hall vs. Connard, All in the Family. It's a documentary on the West Hartford football rivalry put together by Connard graduate Matthew Vinnick. Tremendous film as Vinnick chronicled the 2013 seasons of both schools. Has great interviews, classic footage, and plenty of highlights from that 2013 game. Again, it will take place on Thanksgiving Eve at the Hall Auditorium at 7 o'clock. And for more info, you can call Matt Vinnick at 203-918-1136. 203-918-1136. Or email him at mvinnick. That's M-V-I-N-I-C-K at hotmail.com. I saw the trailer, and it is absolutely fantastic. Something worth to see, Chris. Well, I love documentaries just about as much as anything. And the only thing I like more than documentaries, Pete, is sports documentaries. So I'll be checking that out as everybody else in the West Hartford area should check it out as well. We're ready for more football now as the injured player is off the field. So after the first down run by Richam, and there's a big tackle in the backfield that time. No place for Richam to go as he is just thrown down in the backfield as uh, number two, Redway, comes in and makes the stop. And it's going to be second down and long. So here's Flaherty out of the gun on second down and long. And off again to Richam, tries to cut to his left, has the edge at the 40, 45, and somersaults his way to about the 48-yard line. Great individual effort that time as he gained about 10 on the play, sets up a third down and short. Yeah, it's really important, Pete, that Connor establishes themselves from the offensive line forward here. That's where they have a huge advantage, more experience, more strength up front. They need to take advantage of that right here on third and short. Third down at the 48. 
Hand off again to Richard with running room. First down and more at the 40. Foot race down the sideline. 30, 25, 20, 10 to the 5. Towards the end zone. And he is in. Touchdown, Connor. Richem's 18th touchdown of the season. A 52-yarder that time at the 450 mark. And Connor back in front of the seesaw battle, leading by the count of 13 to 8. Yeah, you know, Pete, one of the biggest differences between these two teams amongst the many is the experience level. And I'm looking at this Buckley roster, I see a lot of juniors and a lot of sophomores. And Richem's been around, he's been through the battles, and he's showing that experience, and more importantly, that talent and breakaway speed right here to put Connor back up front here in the first quarter. So now it's 13 to eight, and Kehoan trying to make it 36 consecutive extra points out of the season. The boot is high enough, long enough, and it is good. So a six-point edge for the Chieftains at 14 to eight. Timeout with 4:50 to play here in the opening quarter. Very ironic because I talked to Coach Ortiz as we talked about the other night. He said, "Hey, he said for 90 percent of the plays we hang in the wall games." He goes, "We are victimized by more big plays than any team I've ever been around in 30 years of organized football." And there was another one right there. Yeah, I mean, if, if the counter coaches were to look at this game tape right now, I would say they'd only be happy with three things. The long run by uh, Flaherty, the block punt, which was really more of a result of a bad snap, and that last play by Richmond. Other than that, they've been there. They've made big stops on the fourth down. They look like a lot of guys ready to tackle, but it does look like they're undersized. And, and when you're undersized, you have to be more aggressive. When you're more aggressive, Pete, you leave yourself open for the big play. That's what happened to Connor on the other side. They brought their safeties up, and they got burned on the bubble screen. Well, we saw it right there. They brought their safeties up to stop the run on third and short, but what did that do? It left uh, no contain once he broke through that first wave, and it was all Richem from there on out running to the house for 52 yards, putting the Chieftains back on top with 450 left in the opening quarter. And with that run, he goes over 2,000 yards for his career, and that's only been done by a handful of running backs in Connard history. So another milestone for Richem, not to mention the 18th time that he gets in the end zone this year in just seven-plus games, plus almost one quarter. Best kickoff of the night goes down to about the 16-yard line. On the return, 25, 30, 35, out to about the 38-yard line. And again, good field position for the Bulldogs, and they'll start first down and 10 yards to go. Reed made the stop on special teams for the Chieftains. Third possession of the night for Buckley, as they'll have it on their side of the field, far hash at the 38-yard line. A reminder, join us for our next broadcast, the Battle of West Hartford. We'll be right back here at McKee Stadium on Saturday afternoon, November 21st, 1 o'clock kickoff, Connard against Hall. Bragging rights of the city on the line, but also probably for the Connor Chieftains with a win tonight and a win at Newington next week. Possible berth in the Class Double L playoffs. Sailor in the offense, first and ten at the 38. And the handoff running right. And I believe that's Redway on the carry as he crosses the 40. Nick Kramus on the bottom of the pile to make the stop. It'll be second down and long. Yeah, just a couple there as they tried to run inside. You know, when there's a huge difference physically, the way you can attack a team is on the edges. That's where they caught him with that bubble screen. We've seen the defense look vulnerable on two plays, and they were both to the outside. One was incomplete off the fingertips, and one obviously resulted in a touchdown. It'll be interesting to see if they stay away from the interior. Second and eight at the 41-yard line. Josh Ward, the running back to the right of the quarterback, Sailor. Junior quarterback in for the first time since week one. Rushes on. He's able to step away. Come to the air side. He's brought down back at the 35-yard line. So a nice play. 83 on the stop. Steven Blintz. That's his sixth sack. That's a team leading total this year for the Chieftain. You know, this is my first time seeing Connor this year, Pete, but he's jumped out. He's been around every single play so far early on the defensive side of the ball. He's got the wrong number to be dominating on defense, but he's doing a good job wearing that 83. Pretty impressive. I mean, he's been in on it no fewer than three or four plays so far here early, and he looks like a big-time playmaker for this Chieftain defense. And sack number six out of the season for him resulted in a five-yard loss. That's up at third and 13 at the 35-yard line. Two wides to either side. Ward the single setback to the right of the quarterback as Saylor barks out the signals, takes a snap, straight drop, back to pass, throws deep middle, and incomplete tipped and almost intercepted. 
off the hands initially of Andre Lyons, the intended receiver. Gerald Strums also had a play on the ball, as did number 34, Kyle Pena Green. And it'll be fourth down. Yeah, Pena Green is going to be kicking himself. He had the chance for the interception there off of the tip and uh, just was unable to make the make the play and will go to that old cliche, which is that's why he's playing in the secondary and not on offense. Absolutely right. Fourth and 13 and the third punt of this first quarter by the Buckley Co-op team. Momentary delay as they needed to get uh, one more player on the field. Shamar Spencer. One of the big time players for him in the special teams. Good snap this time. Again, a low kick. Takes a roll and fielded at the 38-yard line. Here's the return to the near side. Into Buckley territory. Still on his feet is Byron Jones. And finally brought down at about the 35-yard line. Pretty good return that time. About 26 yards on the return after that low line drive kick. Yeah, that was another opportunity for Connor there. It looks like they're finding themselves with plenty of space once the, the play breaks down a little bit. That first level of contain seems to be the issue. Like you said, Coach Ortiz has talked about the number of big plays they've given up, and a lot of that is a reflection of not keeping those contain lanes, which you have to do on special teams and you have to do on defense. So here's Flaherty. Handing off, this is Dorfman, plenty of running room, still on his feet at the 20, out of a tackle at the 15, the 10, the 5, he's in the end zone, touchdown Connor. Jordan Dorfman, the 5 foot 11, 175 pound senior, able to take it from 35 yards out, and the third touchdown of the opening quarter for the Chieftains increases their lead to 20 to 8 at the 242 mark of this opening stanza. Yeah, the blocking was pretty good on that play, but there was a stiff arm unleashed at about the 20-yard line for Dorfman. And uh, that once he got through that one defender, it was all green, and Dorfman took it the rest of the way to give Connor this 20-8 to lead with 2.42 left in the first period, extra point pending. So here's Cahill for the conversion. Plenty of leg. It's on the way, and it is good. So timeout on the field with 2.42 to go here in the opening quarter. And the first double-digit lead of the night for the Chieftains. They increase their advantage to 21-8. to eight. So Dorfman gets into the end zone, just like Richmond. And uh, it's been a great one-two combination in talking to Coach Sosimo, Chris. He said, hey, he said they complement each other very, very well when we have one in as opposed to the other. While they can do different things, the results have been exactly the same. They both run effectively, they both get into the end zone, and they both lead to the potent offense that they have. Yeah, I mean, when you see Dorfman, his body type is a little bit different from that of Richem. Richem is more of that inside-outside slasher, and Dorfman is more of an upright, uh, north-south type of runner. Very similar to what we saw at Hall a few weeks ago with their two running backs that they offer. So it's going to give them a, a, a different look, and we just saw there that Dorfman is plenty strong and once he gets in the open field, has plenty of speed to go the distance, as he did right there, to extend this lead here in the first quarter. So it's 21-8. to eight. As one of the busiest guys on the field tonight is Finn Cahill. We'll talk about him more as the night goes along, but what a year he's had out of the uh, kicking game. Talked about his perfection and extra points. He's also added six field goals. He's six for eight kicking, 31s as long, and three in the game against East Hartford, including the overtime game winner. Those uh, kickoffs aren't that deep. That one returned from the 20, crossing the 40, and the runner's still on his feet. That's number two on the return that time, Redway, and he gets near midfield, where it'll be first down and 10. So the excellent field position continues for the Bulldogs. Who, hate to say it in the first quarter, but down 13 to stem the momentum. They definitely need to put something together on this drive. Yeah, and, and I think that there's they're showing that there are plays there to be made. I mean, they do have playmakers. It's about doing the little things, blocking up front, not turning the ball over, giving your quarterback that little bit of extra time so he could get the ball in the hands of those talented and athletic playmakers on the outside to try to make a big play. So now Lions back at quarterback, the second series that he's had as the QB. Single setback to his right, and he hands off straight ahead. Good initial penetration, tripped up the ball carrier, very short gain on the play, 
as they get uh, back to the original line and uh, very little more. It'll set up a second down and a long. And again, Forsberg making the stop. He had seven individual tackles in the first half of the game against Southington. He's been a terrific performer for him, Chris. Yeah, I mean, this countered defensive front looks pretty stout. They look pretty impressive. Uh, a lot of guys who are kind of in that in-between linebacker, D-lineman kind of range physically. And uh, it shows because they have good speed all the way around the ball. You know, it's interesting. We saw the Bulldogs hit that big play on the smoke screen. I wouldn't be surprised if they go back to it here and try to find some more success with what worked earlier on in the game. Second down and long. Ball right at the midfield stripe. And keeping it this time to the near side as Lyons tries to turn the left corner. Still on his feet. 45, 40, 35, 30. Tries to cut back and is pushed out of bounds inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. Gain of 31. Pena Green was able to push him out of bounds, but a big gain, 30-plus, first down in the red zone. There you go. Simplify things. Put the ball in the hands of your best players, your most talented players. Lions has been very active on both sides of the ball. Right there, he just runs a simple quarterback sweep to the left. One extra blocker because the quarterback's carrying the ball. And that was the difference as he got big yardage down the field. Well, the coaching staff for the Bulldogs said, hey, he's one of our best players, and we try to create mismatches for him in terms of receiving, but also he's tough to bring down in the open field as a runner. Just keep the ball in his hands. And this time he's going to keep it running to his right. He's snuffed out by the uh, countered attack, and they're going to push him down for a loss back behind the 20-yard line. Good lateral pursuit by the left side of that defense by the Chieftains, resulting in a loss. It'll be second and long. Yeah, that time they uh, tried to run the same play but just flipped the field. They went to the long side of the field, and uh, unfortunately for the Bulldogs, the Chieftains were prepared on that second go-around, and uh, there was nothing doing as he lost about three, almost four yards on the play, and it's going to put him behind the chains here, second and long. Second down at about 13 at the 22-yard line. Clock running inside of a minute to play here in the opening quarter with the Chieftains up by 13. Couple, couple wides to either side. Single setback to the left of the quarterback. On the field is Trayvon Allen, the sophomore, for the first stop. Long count. And they fake and trying to go up the middle this time and brought down with a uh, short gain. Actually uh, going to be thrown down right near the original line of scrimmage that time. Fooled nobody as Lucas DeSellis led the charge that time. A little undersized at 5'8", but at 215 pounds, does a good job of plugging up the line. And timeout taken by Buckley. Comes with 18 seconds to go in this first quarter. It proceeds a third down at 13 at the 22-yard line. And a big play upcoming. Of course, four down territory here, you would think, for the Buckley Bulldogs. Yeah, I would think so. It's, it's interesting. Um, they went to Strums on that first smoke screen, and, and he took it to the house for 57 yards, and they haven't gone back to it yet. Um, they've been trying to do this whole this whole drive has been based on Lions' legs. He looked a little tired after that first run, especially since he's playing both ways, every down. That's a, that's a lot to do for a quarterback, something you don't see as much uh, this these days as you did back in the past. So um, I would look for them to get the ball out of his hands early and try to, to bust another one of those screen plays, which will be tough on third and long, but you got to think you have two plays to get this first down where they are because they showed that they didn't kick the extra point. We've seen their punting game. They're probably in go for it territory. So right here, you got to look for something to maybe pick up six or seven. Yeah, try to split it in half, go for half the distance, and then try to be successful again on fourth down as well. So after the timeout, third and 13 at the 22-yard line. Long snap count. Back to pass, throwing deep down the right side, and it's incomplete. Josh Ward threw the pass that time. Single coverage down the right side, but the pass was awry, and that'll set up fourth down. Back, that was intended for Andre Lyons, trying to exploit that uh, height mismatch that he has, but uh, he needed to be Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to come down with that one. Yeah, it's tough going, man. Every down on defense, then you go from quarterback running the ball four plays in a row to, uh, to having to catch a fade pattern, and he's right back in there again. Lyons is earning his keep tonight, as he is uh, everywhere for this Bulldog unit. Bulldogs have had three different kids throw passes here in the opening 11 minutes and 47 seconds. So as expected, fourth down. 
Chris expecting the smoke screen here. Back to pass. Rushes on, tries to run up the middle, and Ward's going to be brought down, shy of the first down. And the Connor defense able to hold and turn it back to the offense. It'll be first down in the other direction. That play just doomed from the start that time. Didn't really have very good direction, and Josh Ward was hung out to draw. Yeah, Pete, I probably would have liked to see that play on third down. Give yourself a chance to make the fourth down more manageable, but they elected to, to go for it all on third down, and then on fourth down, the pocket collapsed, and Ward is one of their quarterbacks, and he's the smallest of the bunch, and he struggled to see the pressure, and he had to try to salvage it by making something up with the run, and he's really that successful. There's five seconds left in the quarter, and Connor has the ball back now, uh, looking to improve on their 21-8 lead. Back to pass. Throwing right side. Pass is complete and then dropped. Jack Ryan was the intended receiver, and that'll end the first quarter. So that was a player that was doomed from the start. Connor got away with what should have been a holding penalty that time and running for his life and throwing downfield. The pass went incomplete. But still a good quarter for Connor. They fell behind, but bounced back with consecutive touchdowns. And at the end of one here at Robert J. McKee Stadium in West Hartford, it's Connor 21 and the Buckley Co-op team 8 as we continue with our presentation of West Hartford High School Sports presented by the War Chief Sports Council here on W. HCTV. And the War Chief Sports Council would like to thank their captains level supporters, Hartford Distributors, Franklin Fine Beers, Cork and Bottle, and the Babe Ruth Organization, and the all conference supporters, Allied Printing, and the Hartford Golf Club. Thanks to one and all from the War Chief Sports Council for making we presentations like tonight's game on WHC TV possible. So, 12 minutes in the books, Christopher, and look forward to 36 more with uh, the Chieftains starting to flex their muscles a little bit. And if they can uh, put together a drive right here, they would certainly be on established control on this one. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear that, that we're dealing with... Um, different levels of talent here and experience so for Connor they can't get complacent they have to stick to their game plan everyone take care of their assignments and success is sure to follow if they do those things second down and ten and straight drop by Flaherty sets up a middle screen and it goes incomplete he was intending his pass for Byron Jones and Richam was there in the vicinity as well and it goes awry and it'll set up a third down and ten for this Connard offense. A lot of big numbers on this offense. Byron Jones had a couple of early catches, has been quiet since, has 32 receptions on the year. Jack Ryan, we talked about 24 catches, averaging almost 20 yards per grab, and has seven touchdowns on the season. Here's Flaherty, the rush is on, and in the backfield and throwing him down is Jaden Great, the sophomore, able to get the penetration, meet up with the quarterback, and throw him down. Yeah, Pete, that's kind of just what we were just talking about, right? I mean, everyone's got to do their jobs. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're a huge favorite. You're going up against a team that hasn't had a win, but you can't take those things for granted. And that time, the pass rush was too strong. Someone on the offensive line didn't do their assignment, and uh, it left the Connor with a obvious 4th and 20 punting situation here from the back of their own end zone. And that Simplicio is on the field, averaging 34 yards a kick. Nice kick. Hits down at midfield, takes a countered roll, and down at about the 47-yard line. So a big beat, 43 yards on the kick by Simplicio, and it'll be first down and 10, going in the other direction for the Bulldogs near midfield. Or Chief Sports Council will also like to thank its sponsors at the MVP level, Aetna and West Hartford Baseball along with the all-state level, Dave Newman Photography, Macca Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reese, PC, Counselors at Law, ESPN, the West Hartford Youth Basketball League, West Hartford Girls Lacrosse, the Connard PTO, and Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gibson. Thanks to one and all for their patronage to the War Chief Sports Council. Line of scrimmage, near hash at the Buckley 47. First down and 10. They go with two wides to either side. And it's Lyons remaining in the game at quarterback. Takes the snap, runs to his left, tries to get a block. He's in trouble, and he's going to be thrown down for a big loss at about the 43-yard line. Josh Ward tried to lay the block that time on the left side. Looked like he got in Lyons' way more than anything else, and that allowed the pursuit to recover and get over and make 
the tackle for the law. Yeah, another great play by the Connor defense and uh, another negative play on first down, putting themselves behind the chains for this Bulldog offense. You've got to be, when you're not favored, you've got to be perfect. And things like second and 14 make it very tough to uh, overcome some of those uh, inefficiencies on offense. Yeah, you look for consistency on first down, and if we had their yardage on first down, it's uh, not been good. They throw it to the near side, strums the receiver, and he's thrown down immediately as uh, hails among those to come over and bring him down, and it's going to be third down and long. Chris Chakwara also in on the stop that time for the Chieftains. So they started this drive at their own 47. They're now backed up to the 38. It'll set up a third and 19 for the Bulldogs. One of their big play guys, Goff Jordan, lines up to the far side. Part of two wide receivers to that far side. Two to the near side as well. Third and 19. As Strums came across the field. Long snap, bobbled, rushes on. He steps away with a face mask possible. And coming back to the near side is Ward running room, crosses the 45 out to the 49-yard line, made something out of nothing. And this drive is going to be extended anyways as the face mask will tack on 15 yards against Connor. It's tough to get away with a face mask at any point, Pete, but when it's on the quarterback and he's in the pocket, it's pretty noticeable, and that was the case there. Really impressive effort by Ward to actually get some great yardage after the face mask, stay on his feet and pick up about another 14 yards of field position and really put his uh, offense after the penalty. They're going to be in pretty good shape here to try to cut this to a one-score game, Pete. Well, Chris, they get the 15 tacked on to the end of the run, so they'll move it all the way down to the Connor 36-yard line. So what was a third and 19 that confronted the Bulldogs, if you add the run together along with the uh, penalized yardage, turns into a 26-yard advance for the visitors and has them in business first down and 10 at the 36-yard line. Very interesting to see this Bulldogs musical offense, especially a quarterback. They move everybody all over the place. The one constant seems to be Lions. Now it's the quarterback under center. That's Ward. And he hands off to Patterson. And it's the defensive front standing tall that time for the Chieftains. You know, on that play, Pete, we saw a rarity in today's game. They went double tight, double wing, no wide receivers, and just tried to outpower the countered front. I don't know if that's going to be a successful formula for this Bulldog offense. I think you've got to spread them out and create some space in order to let some of your speedsters be successful. You think, Chris, it's just a, a case of changing things up, trying to give them a look that they haven't seen, and, and really it's not going to be successful in the long run. Like I said, I mean, when you're not winning games, you always are going to try stuff, and I never have any problems with that. I mean, you, you can't hurt yourself by trying to mix it up. It just wasn't successful there. Second down and nine. Ball at the 35-yard line. Again, it's Josh Ward under center. Play action fake, back to pass, rushes on, he tries to throw it sidearm, and it goes incomplete. It's a forward pass, it goes incomplete. We'll see outside of the tackle box when he threw it, and he threw it above and beyond the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and he had a guy there. That time they were looking to get Lions on the play action. He was lined up as a tight end or a wing back. I couldn't really tell, and he got held up by one of the linebackers for Connard, but the umpire totally didn't see it and that allowed for the play to be blown up and that's where their number one target was and he actually made a nice play just to get rid of it and salvage the down and distance for the Bulldogs. Zach Reed back on the field defensively as uh, he replaces Pena Green in the counter defensive attack. Third and nine at the 35 yard line. Ward remains a quarterback and remains under center for this third down play. Full house backfield, and the pitch 
And now they're going to pass, throw it deep out there. Wide open is Lions. He's got it at the 10 5. Touchdown. The pitch went to Strums. He threw it to a wide open Lions who caught it and able to waltz into the end zone for the second touchdown of the night. And pending the conversion, it's 21 14 off the trickeration at the 803 mark of the second quarter. Pretty nifty stuff there, Chris. Yeah, I mean, just a double pass. That was nice. And, and you know, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the corner to bite up. And he bit up. I mean, Lions was just hanging out all by himself around the 10-yard line. That was as easy of a walk-in touchdown. The hard part there is actually catching the ball when you're that wide open, Pete. I'm serious. And he did that part, and he strolled on in. And you look up at that scoreboard, eight minutes left to go, 21-14. And you would think they'll go for two again here. Chance to cut it to five as they keep the offense on the field. So Coach Pablo Ortiz said, hey, he's going to reach deep into his bag of tricks. And... Uh, Six days after Halloween, tricks and treats tonight, both for this Buckley offense. Again, it's Ward. Throws back across the middle, passes tipped, and then picked off in the end zone. It goes incomplete for the two-point conversion and stops the clock with 8.03 to go. And a conventional score with its 21-14. Connard in front. Pass a little behind Lions that time as they went for the two. There's a case where you have to throw it up for grabs and let him just out jump everybody. Yeah, again, I mean, they, you know who they're going to go to at this point. We know that Lions is going to be in the mix basically on everything, on both sides of the ball. We've seen him in a variety of different uh, a variety of different positions, and and he, he, he's, the, he's the mismatch that they have, and it's a smart game plan. You try, to, you try to put yourself in a position to be successful, and for them, getting him the ball, getting the ball to number five is their best formula for success. Now... They trail by seven. There's eight minutes left in the first half. This is a critical opportunity for Connard to reassert their authority in the contest, but also to get some mojo. You look at this Connard sideline. There's not a lot of energy over here. They, I, I don't want to say they're sleepwalking, but they're certainly not firing on all cylinders. This is an opportunity to get some of that mo going as we head towards the end of the first half. So we've seen how troublesome the hunting game can be for Buckley and we'll see if Connor can take advantage of perhaps a short kickoff here Jones and Richam back deep for the Connor Chieftains as you can hear in the background the dulcet tones of Bill Watson the longtime excellent PA announcer of the Connor Chieftains and here they come back on the return to the near side out of a tackle to 25 and finally brought down across the 30 yard line Flags down on the play, probably back the Chieftains up even further. As it was Jordan Dorfman on the return that time for the Chieftains, and we'll wait for the official call. Allen with the tackle. Allen made the stop that time for Buckley. And they're going to walk it off against Cotter and back them up. So one advantage that Buckley's had, they've had the much better of the opening field position so far tonight. As Connard for another drive will have to start deep in their own territory as uh, they walk it off back near the 20 yard line. Yeah, no, they've definitely had great field position and, and Connard hasn't, but um, you know, really Connard hasn't run that many plays on offense, Pete. I, ca I can't count, it's probably under 10 for the whole first half. So it's an opportunity for them to uh, get some more experience here on offense, but. But really, they need to start winning at the line of scrimmage and, and just keep it simple and dominate on offense. Dorfman is the setback as they go with two wides to the right. And here's the handoff to Dorfman. Tries to get out of a tackle and is brought down at the 25-yard line. Shoestring tackle that time by Ramel Kersey, among others, that time in on the stop for Buckley. Clock running inside of 7.35 to play here in the opening half. Connor trying to add to what is a 21 to 14 advantage. Second down and eight upcoming. And the keeper this time by Flaherty crosses the 25, still on his feet, gets out to the 30 yard line. It's going to be third down and short. It's going to be a third down and three upcoming. Huge play here for the Connor offense. Keep those chains moving and try to extend this lead here early. Just keep it simple, run the football and move those chains. Third down and two. 
Trying to convert on third down. They will. Straight ahead. Running room. 50, 45, 40, 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Connor. Another big play as Dorfman able to break away. He scampers 70 yards for the touchdown. His second touchdown of the night, and that ups the lead to 27-14 at the 645 mark as the big plays continue for this Connard offense. Yeah, Pete, again, we saw the same thing earlier in the game, a third and short. They bring their safeties up to stop the run, but once he gets through that first level, it was nothing but daylight for Dorfman. He let his natural ability do the rest, and he took it to the house for another huge first-half touchdown run by Dorfman. Here's Cahill with the conversion on the way, and it is good. 6.45 to go here in the opening half. Connor doubling up Buckley on the scoreboard. It's 28-14 with the Chieftains in front. Love to recognize that Connor football has two alumni entering halls of fame later this month. George Beaudry was served as an assistant football coach from 68 to 77 and head wrestling coach from 68 to 86. He'll be inducted into the Connecticut High School Coaches Hall of Fame on Thursday, November 19th. Beaudry's wrestling teams won five state titles, 13 league championships, and get this record in his 18 seasons at the helm, how about 235, 30, and two. And Bill Condon, who played football and lacrosse while a student athlete at Connard, class of 77, he'll get inducted into the Connecticut chapter of the U.S. Lacrosse Hall of Fame on Saturday, November 21st. He's one of five people to be inducted that evening. In addition to being Connard's head of lacrosse coach since 1992, Condon also coached freshman football for 18 seasons from 88 through 05. So congratulations to both George Beaudry and Bill Condon for their inductions into Hall's of fame. And of course, we talked about the 21st. That's a date that we have circled on the calendar for Connard and Hall football. And we'll be right back here for the broadcast two weeks from tomorrow, Saturday afternoon, the 21st at 1 o'clock right here at McKee Stadium as the Chieftains and Warriors go at it at 1 o'clock. Kickoff angle to the near side, fielded at the 28-yard line, crossing the 30 out to about the 35. And a good job that time as uh, they're able to bring the guy down after about a nine yard. That was Trayvon Allen, the sophomore, on the return. The Chieftains brought him down after a short return. So it'll be first down and Tad just shy of the 40 yard line. 28 14. With about six and a half to play here in the opening half. Seen so much variety on the offense of the Buckley Bulldogs. Be interesting to see how they come out and line up again as they start on this drive. First and ten at the 37. A couple of wides to either side, single setback to the left of the quarterback. This is Ward, throws to the far side, complete. Across the 35, that's Lyons, but he's going to be pursued and brought down shy of the 35-yard line. About a four-yard loss on the play, wrapped up by four different Chieftains on the play, and it'll be second down and long. That was a nice job by the defense. Real was in there on the play. Carson Real, 5'9", 160, senior in on the play, and you've got to be impressed with the, uh, the way that this Chieftains defense is chasing down the football after they hit that big bubble screen. Now what they need to do is make sure that their safeties don't cheat up and they don't get burned deep, Pete, because they've given up two huge plays and really nothing else. That's true, Chris. You take those two plays out of the equation, and the defense has really stood pretty tall here tonight. Second and 13. This is Ward again. He wants to keep it. Cuts back to his left, and he's going to be brought down shy of the 35-yard line. As he tried to cut from his right to his left, he was brought down by two different chieftains shy of that 35-yard line. Hendricks leading the charge that time for the Chieftains. We talked about second and long, third and long. Here's another third down in an obvious pass situation. And again, if you're the under-experienced, under team, the situations you want to avoid, and they just haven't been able to avoid them, Chris, here tonight. Yeah, when you don't have a conventional running game, it's really hard to avoid these types of situations because it's all based on timing and, and everybody doing their job perfectly if you're going to hit a big play. And they've really struggled on the early down and distance. Third down and 15. They spot it at the 32-yard line. 
Back to pass, the pump fake by Ward. Throws it deep down the left side, and the pass is going to be intercepted on the far side. Was he inbounds? And he was. It was picked off an OB Connor ball at the 36 yard line. Bobby Iverson on the right corner that time, able to step in front of the intended receiver. He's able to jump up and make the pick and give the ball back to the offense. There you go, Pete. That was another example. The down and distance created desperation for the Bulldog offense, and that led to him just throwing it up there. It really, honestly, is a pretty good play. If you look at the way their punting game has been working, I mean, that X is a great punt. It might be a bad play by Connor to intercept that football. They might have been better off letting it drop and, and forcing them to punt again. Yeah, if you knock the ball away, that's 33 yards downfield. Misdirection play, far side, with run around 40, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! Is that Dorfman again? And that... Sixty-four yards on the touchdown, and it's thirty-four to fourteen at four forty-seven here in the second quarter. So Flaherty with the fake handoff, and he was able was he able to keep it? And he goes down the right sideline that time. Used Dorfman as the decoy, kept it, and went down the far right sideline. Sixty-four yards for the score. So here's a quarterback who's averaged one hundred and fifty yards through the air over his last three, but he gets it done with his legs here tonight as the Cahill kick is on the way, and it good. So 35-14 as we wind down play at the end of the first half. Flaherty on the scamper that time. Yeah, that was a great job. You said it, Pete. I mean, the last uh, the last two counter touchdowns had been long runs by Dorfman, so that time they used him as a decoy. and. That's the whole purpose of the read option. You read the defensive ends, and if they jump up too high, the quarterback has the right to keep it. That time, Flaherty did just that. He kept it and took it to the house for 64 yards. That's uh, that's one, two, three touchdowns of over 50 yards for the Chieftains. And the other touchdown was Dorfman was a 35-yarder to go along with the block punt. So their offense is accumulating some pretty hefty numbers here early with a lot of football left to be played as they lead this one 35 to 14 with 447 left to go in the opening half. It was a game that one time they trailed 8 to 7 and since then they've outscored the visitors 28 to 6 over the last 13 plus minutes. So here's Cahill teeing the ball up. Talking to head coach Matt Sosmo the other night. I said, is he the best kicker that this team has had since Mike Killorn? And he said, ironically, it's Killorn who kicks at Western Connecticut State University that works with Cahill. And a lot of the numbers are very, very similar between the two athletes. Has a booming kick this time over the heads of Buckley. It's a live ball down at the five-yard line, and Connor is going to pick it up inside the five-yard line. As long as it goes beyond ten yards, it's a live ball. And a big, big-time mistake that time by the Bulldogs and an easy opportunity here for an easy conversion for Connor. You know what happened there, Pete? We've talked about how good the kicker is, but he doesn't have the biggest leg. He's more of an accuracy-based kicker. Well, that time he overkicked the coverage, like you said, and, and, and the, the typical tendency, if you're the last man back, is you just assume it's in the end zone. I think he might have thought the ball was in the end zone. There's so many markings on these field turf fields, and it wasn't. It was a live ball on the three-yard line, and now Connor has a first and goal. Well, you know, it was going towards the end zone. It took a little backspin. It took a back bounce and then went dead at the three-yard line, and the Chieftain is able to pounce on top of it. And uh, they'll try to punch it in here. First and goal from that spot. Here's the handoff. Running left and into the end zone. Dorfman with the touchdown. So at 441. And that makes it 41 to 14. Chieftains in front. And is that the hat trick for Mr. Dorfman tonight? That would be a hat trick, Pete, but Flaherty prevented him from scoring the natural hat trick. <laughs> we'll throw our hockey references in here. And speaking of hockey, we'll have our first hockey telecast will be in the new year. It'll be January the 4th on a Monday night. 
at Veterans Rink as the kick is on the way and good from a Cahill of girls hockey that night as the Connor Call co-op team takes on Branford, who was the uh, runner-up in the state championships a year ago. So 42-14, 441 to go here in the opening half. Keep in mind that one more road game in the regular season for the Chieftains as uh, they'll go to Newington next week. And with a win in that contest, that makes all the more importance to that game on November the 21st because it very well could be for a berth in the Class L tournament as they revert to the old form. Top eight will continue to qualify for the playoffs, but they won't have the big and small divisions within the divisions going forward. And uh, they'll return to a quarterfinal, semifinal, final format this year with just one division within double L, L, M, and S playing forward. So the dates to mark down on your calendar include December the 1st. That'll be quarterfinal night in the state tournament. Hey, we've got some local high school scores to look at. Weathersfield, one of the top teams in the state, is leading Maloney 27 to nothing in the first half. And Northwest Catholic, the other school in West Hartford, trails Bloomfield by the identical score of 27 to nothing. Thanks to Chris for the out-of-town scoreboard. As it's a short kick, fielded at the 30-yard line. On the return is Spencer, and Spencer hits the middle of the field, crosses the 40, and gets out to the 43-yard line. Shamar Spencer, the junior, who's a wide receiver, a shutdown corner, and... A big contributor on special teams. Ireson made the stop that time for Connard, and it'll be first down and 10 at the 44-yard line for the Buckley Co-op Bulldogs. Spotted at the near hash as they line up Jordan far to the left-hand side. A couple of wide outs to the near side. The quarterback is Lyons, who runs to his left, powers his way across midfield into counter territory, and finally brought down at about the 49-yard line. Gained about seven on the play, and it'll be second down and three. Tough guy to tackle in the open field, Chris. It's 6'4", 210, and he runs very powerfully. Yeah, like I said, I mean, we've talked about how inexperienced this team is, but you've got to be pretty impressed with Lyons, and he's only a junior. Under the right circumstances, he might be able to play at the next level. I mean, you see some size and some athleticism and obviously toughness and dedication to play on both sides in all these positions. And he's, he's really doing a nice job for his team of keeping them in the game as long as they did so far tonight. Timeout taken by the Bulldogs. Comes with 3.55 to go in the opening half. 42-14 is the score. Get another reminder that on Wednesday night, November 25th at 7 o'clock at the Hall High School Auditorium, there will be a presentation of the film entitled Hall vs. Connard, All in the Family. It's a documentary piece on the West Hartford football rivalry put together by Connard graduate Matt Vinnick. Tremendous film as Vinnick chronicled the 2013 seasons of both schools, has great interviews, classic footage, and highlights from that 2013 game. Again, the showing will take place on Thanksgiving Eve at the Hall Auditorium at 7 o'clock. And for more info, you can call Matt Vinnick at area code 203-918-1136. 203-918-1136. Or you can email him at mvinnick, that's M-V-I-N-I-C-K, at hotmail.com. If you're a football fan from West Hartford, definitely want to come to Hall Auditorium on that night. After the timeout, straight ahead this time is Marcel Mitchell. One of the first times that uh, we're calling his name tonight. Redway was on the field as well. And it's down to the 46-yard line. And it's going to be shy of the first down. And now they're going to they're gonna move the chains. It's going to be first and 10 from that spot. Three and a half to play. Opening half. And the clock running. Here's Lyons, cuts up the middle, 
Still on his feet and then gang tackled after a short pickup. Gained about a yard on the play before he was stood up by the Chieftains defense and will be second down and nine. Yeah, again, I mean, Lions is doing it all for them right now. And I think at this point, the Chieftains have figured out to locate number five. And where he's lining up is a pretty good indication of where the Bulldogs are going to look to run their next offensive play. Um, it might be a good idea for them to try to spread him out and use him as a decoy and go to the other side, run another one of those bubble screens to one of their other uh, explosive players. But it, it looks like they're content going back to Lions here. And here he goes again, and this time he gets another yard before he's tripped up and brought down at the 44-yard line. Kyron Bridges among those in on the stop that time for the Chieftains. Wanted to mention on the previous stop that Simplicio had made the stop. Key performer on the defense for these uh, Connor Chieftains. And uh, certainly somebody that uh, affects special teams as well as he continues to boot the ball effectively at over 35 yards a kick. Third and eight, Lions back in the pocket, throws it deep down the middle, intercepted at the 20-yard line. Nice play on the ball that time. As coming over was Bobby Irison, the 5'11", 170-pound senior, read the quarterback's eyes all the way, well overthrown, and Irison sitting back in deep center field to make the play on the ball. He was the only one within five yards of the vicinity of the football. Again, kind of similar to the last uh, interception by Iverson. Third and long, uh, all alone in center field makes an easy interception. But again, it works kind of like a great punt. I mean, they put it down at the 20-yard line. Worst things could happen. And now Connard's probably going to have the last possession of the first half here with two minutes left to go. Yeah, that's twice in a row that uh, they've intercepted where it's worked just like a punt for the Bulldogs. Ryan catches it left side, gets out to the 25, maybe the 26-yard line, 8 of 5 on the play. Ryan's been held in check so far tonight, had 126 yards in the win over Simsbury last week, had 126 in the game prior to that against Southington. Second down and 5 at the 26-yard line. Here's the handoff and going nowhere. The Chieftains read nicely that time by the Buckley defense. Malin Brown, the junior, the first one in the backfield that time for the D. Loss of about six on the play. Back to the 20-yard line. Sets up a third down and 11. Clock running. A buck 10 to go here in the opening half. Flaherty in the gun. With three wides to the right, one to the near side. Back to pass. The rush is on. And he's going to be brought down with a flag down on the play. He was horse collared near the one yard line. What a shame for Buckley as they had the rush on. They brought him down. And with uh, plenty of laundry on the field right here. It's a little overkill, don't you think, Pete? I mean, I think one flag would have gotten the job done. Every single one of these officials decided to throw their flag. You know, that's that might be the second flag of the whole game. I mean, we had the one face mask, and, and, and that looks like number two. I mean, it's really been a fairly well-played game in terms of not too many penalties. There's a decent flow to the game. It's a lot of points, obviously, if you like if you like 56 points in the first half of the game, you've gotten that, but that's a critical, terrible time for a penalty. You have a timeout, you get the ball back, and now you're giving Connor the ball, and look at where the ball is now, Pete. Huge penalty. Yeah, so instead of fourth down and punting from the back of your end zone, all of a sudden the Chieftains have it out at the 35-yard line with a first down and 10. And Flaherty throwing to his right. Complete has his man across the 40, out to about the 42-yard, up to the 42-yard line. So a gain of about six on the play, and he'll set up a second down and four clock running inside of 40 seconds to go here in the opening half. Flaherty taking his time back there. Come on. Again, they have a four-touchdown lead, but if you're going to practice the two-minute offense at least, perhaps show a sense of urgency. Flaherty on the keeper. Steps out of the tackle at the 40. Still on his feet. 40, 35, 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. What an individual effort that time by the Connor quarterback. Turns it into a 58-yard touchdown, and with 13 seconds to go here in the opening half, the Connor Chieftains add to their lead. 
Yeah, I mean, again, Pete, it looked like they were being a little complacent, but maybe they knew exactly what they were doing. As uh, if you have a quarterback that can just go 60 yards with it, you might as well just let the time bleed down and then go 60 yards if you, if you could on a simple read option. I mean, there was nothing complex about that. He pulled the ball and then just ran untouched basically for 60 yards. And another huge rushing half in the first half for Connard so far. And Cahill adds his seventh consecutive extra points of this opening half. 49-14 with 13 seconds to go until the intermission. So you have to feel for this Buckley team that has now surrendered 300 and 15 points on the season in seven and a half football contests. And we will threaten the Cochran rule in the second half. Like I said, I mean, you look at the two rosters, you see just looking at the sidelines, the one team has more players, bigger players, older players you expect these things one team is five and two the other one is oh and seven but you gotta be imp i mean i'm telling you i've seen a lot of oh and seven teams and this is an oh and seven team that's playing hard i mean they're making plays they're they're just short-handed and and the biggest thing is their safeties are getting too close to the line of scrimmage and they're just allowing huge plays they're called safeties because you've got to be back there in case everything else fails, you have a safety valve. And when your safeties are on top of the line of scrimmage, it creates huge, huge plays, and that's what's happened so far for Conard running the football. So they're kicking off. Another good boot by Cahill. This one far side of the field, inside the 15-yard line as they come back on the return. And they get the, the 24, it will be first down and 10 with seven seconds to go. And we'll see if Buckley just take a knee or if they want to try to make things happen here before the end of this first half. So got it. Well on their way to victory number six on the season. And as we said, they'll take their game to Alumni Field in Newington. Friday night broadcast next week on the 13th at 6.30. And then they'll play again on the 21st against Hall. So perhaps time for one more play. Ward at quarterback. Lions, the big play receiver, lines up to the near side. Part of two wides to the right side. Here's Ward. He's just going to keep it. He's going to dance around. He's going to run straight ahead. He's going to get out to the 25-yard line. And that's the way the first half will end. So a good first half. 24 minutes in the books here at McKee Stadium. Your score at halftime. Connor. 49 and the Buckley Co-op team 14. We're going to step aside and we'll come back later in the intermission. Go over some first half scoring later on and we'll also have first half stats and talk some more as we get ready for the third quarter. Again, 49-14 at the intermission. You're watching West Hartford High School Sports on WHC TV Channel 5 presented by the War Chief Sports Council. and use the facility for a second. Okay, you got me.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the results of the 50-50 raffle. Check your tickets at winning number 7, 2, 9, 4, 6, 5. Again, 7, 2, 9, 4, 6, 5. If you own that market, bring it to the first spot. We hope you're taking advantage of the concession stand. These questions are sponsored by the speaking class of 2016. Hot dogs, popcorn, soda, snacks, homemade goods. We appreciate your patronage. Get yeah, a couple of notes. The video, Paul versus Connors, all in the family. That show follows the 2013 season as the Chiefs and the Warriors prepare for their Thanksgiving Day, Thanksgiving weekend class. It also explores the connections that develop between the Robinsons and the McKee and the Sosakos and shows the incredible relationship and leadership that shapes that rivalry. The video showing will be at the Hall High School Auditorium on the evening of Wednesday, November 25th. The time for that is 7 p.m. For more information, call Matthew Zinnick, 203-918-111-36. 1136. One more time. 203-918-1136. That's Matthew Zinnick. The World Chief Sports Council is proud to announce that in association with their sponsors of West Coast Community TV, tonight's game is being broadcast live on Channel 5 and can also be accessed via the internet from anywhere in the world. It is also accessible here at the game via your smartphones. Tune in Pete Lamoro and Chris Grace as they call the game with help from many students in support of tonight's production. The World Chief Sports Council and WHC TV will also broadcast the final game of the regular season as the Warriors come to the McKee Stadium on Saturday the 21st to challenge the Connor Chiefs. Game time, 1 p.m. The final note, the World Chief Sports Council, the Houston Club that supports Paul and Connor student athletes, invites you to attend and support their annual Tailgate fundraiser. That event will be on Saturday, November 14th at Town Hall from 6.30 to 10.30. Please come to West Conference Biggest Tailgate and support your coaches and kids. For more information and to purchase tickets, please visit www.worksheet.net. That's www.worksheet.net. Ladies and gentlemen, we're still looking for a winner. That's on your 50 50 raffle ticket. That's set 79 4 6 5. 79 4 6 5. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We do have a winner.
So, um, I'll take this one. This is one I've had. Okay. Right. You put, uh, you, you, remember, you press on that to talk, yep. right? Um, okay. This is the in and out and in and out. Back. Hey, are you watching it? How does it look? Does it look good? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's great. It's awesome. Yeah, when you uh, when you look at the uh, the clock, that's me. I'm the one. I'm the when I put the. I'm the one, like, uh, when, when you see, like, uh, the camera on the clock, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's the time? What does the time say? How much does it say on it? Oh, so you know what? You're a minute behind. Okay. Yeah, you got like a minute back. It's it. It's good. I got it. I got it. Yeah. How are you feeling? Feeling alright? Alright. Alright, I, I love you. Okay. Yeah. That's your wife. That's my mom. Okay. Alright. Even better. So you're going to do this? You're okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. I'm gonna take over the other one. Yeah, yeah. Go sit in the That's alright. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm definitely involved with this. Yeah, we could do the hall game. We can't do the hall game. Yeah, we gotta do the hall game. We can't do it. No, it's here. Yeah, this one. It's gonna be the parents. It's the parents' Oh, shit. Yeah, we gotta get something to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gotta be a junior. And welcome back, everybody, to McKee Stadium here in West Hartford as we wind down halftime with Connard in front, 49-14. to 14. And Chris Grace, who joins me for the broadcast, he's going to update the first half scoring for you. And you got a lot of work, Chris. Yeah, they didn't make it easy for me, Peter. We've got uh, 635 in the first quarter. Connard took the lead on a five-yard block punt by Nick Cranmus. Extra point was good, and that was a 7-0 lead for the Chieftains. But not so fast as the Bulldogs jump back on a 57-yard catch and run from Strums. That's Gerald Strums, Jr. The two-point conversion was good to Josh Ward, and the Bulldogs took a surprising 8-7 lead. Connor answered right back with a 52-yard run by the very talented senior Nate Richam. And then they scored another one with the extra point, 35 yards from Dorfman to make it 21 to 8, still in the first quarter. First score of the second quarter was a 36-yard double pass to Lyons, and Andre Lyons walked into the end zone to make it 21 to 14 with 8:03 left to go in the second quarter. Connor responded once again, though a 70-yard run, the first of excuse me, the second run of the game into the end zone for Jordan Dorfman. This was a 70-yard run with 6.45 left to go, doubling the margin at 28-14. to 14. Just a few minutes later, 4.47 left to go. Connard added to that lead, making it 35-14 on a 64-yard run by quarterback Declan Flaherty. Just six seconds later, following a recovered kickoff that landed dead at the three-yard line, and Connard jumped on it, Dorfman would add another to make it 42-14 with 4.41 left to go. 
And then Flaherty went 60 yards to the house with just 13 seconds left to go. The extra point was once again good. Seven touchdowns, seven successful PATs. And that's where we stand, 49-14 to Chieftains here at McKee Stadium. And we'll see what we have in store in the second half. Good a couple of byproducts here. You can uh, rest some of your key players, which uh, is always good if they don't have to get banged up for four quarters. Clear the bench a little bit, get some experience for some of the underclassmen and maybe some of the reserves who don't ordinarily get to see as much playing time as they might. And uh, try to work on some things in terms of plays offensively and defensively as they get ready for the contest next week against Newington. What if you're in the other sideline? What if you're in the uh, huddle with uh, Pablo Ortiz? What are you telling your kids who played at times, as you indicated, pretty well? I mean, they've had some big plays here tonight. They've just been suspect to the big plays with, you know, perhaps uh, on a few occasions, the safety's uh, getting caught out of position. But again, here's a case where they can build some momentum towards next week, perhaps, uh, as they look to their, their last two games of the year. Yeah, I mean, really, it would be simple for me, Pete. I would tell them that with eight minutes left in the first half, we were down 21 to 14. And then we stopped taking care of all the things we can take care of, which is each individual assignment. Guys got burned deep. The safeties crept up too close to the line of scrimmage. They didn't recover the kickoff. Little things like that they could control. Will they win the game? Probably not. I'd go as far as to say they're not going to win the game. But what they can do is each member on that field, all 11 guys who are on the field at once, can do their own individual assignment for the greater good of the team. And they've shown that there's enough talent out there that they can make plays. And if each guy does what he's supposed to do, we'll have successful results. And as long as everyone does that, Coach Ortiz, I'm sure, will be satisfied with his team's performance. And that's one thing that he indicated to me on the phone the other night. I said, hey, he said, we've not been in a lot of ball games, but the one thing we've always had, we've always had resiliency, we've always had fight, the kids are competitive, they don't quit, and he goes, that's what I'm proud of. And uh, again, he's got a, an interesting program. They won five games two years ago. It's the only time in the last 25 years that they've won more than three games in a single season. They were on the rise, and then uh, all of a sudden, lower numbers and injuries have uh, curtailed their advancement. Off the opening kick of the second half, straight up the middle go the Chieftains and brought down at about the 49-yard line. That could have been a touchdown-saving tackle by number 47 on the play for this uh, Bulldogs team as uh, the kicker made the stop, and it'll be first down and 10, just shy of midfield. So it'll be first and 10 out at the 48-yard line for the Chieftains, their first possession here in the third quarter. They scored on six of their seven possessions in the opening half, added a seventh touchdown on a special teams play. First down handoff as they cross into Buckley territory down to the 47-yard line. There's Dorfman on the carry, and he picks up about four or five on the play. It'll be second down and medium yardage. Now, Pete, I defer to your expertise here. What is the exact implication uh, of the Cochran rule? When does that come into play? 50 points that the spread would have to be in order for the coach to be uh, subject to a uh, reprimand from the CIAC. As Flaherty goes straight ahead, down to about the 32-yard line, and he picked up about 16 on the play. They have a couple of options here, Chris. They can at uh, some time go to running time in the second half. And then you can also see the situation where Connor just completely clears the bench and, and then not try to score at all. Right now, they're 35 points in front. So they can still have two touchdowns, two extra points, and not be subject to uh, any disciplinary action from the CIAC. So we'll see the uh, starters at least two more drives probably is what it amounts to. Flaherty throws to his right, complete 35-30 down the far sideline. There's Jones on the receiving end, and he's finally pushed out of bounds by Andrew Redway on the far side. It'll be first and ten for the Chieftains. Yeah, we uh, coming into this game, Jones is one of the guys that we targeted as being a big difference maker. But the nature of this game, the way it's played out, the way they've been able to run the football, we haven't seen much of him, but that was a nice little catch and run by the, by the wide out there, Jones, for Connor. He's the senior, came in with 32 catches for 279 yards. So before tonight, he was averaging four and a half grabs per contest. Had two on the uh, first possession of the first quarter, two catches and runs. And then since then, that was only a second catch since. 
running to his right and brought down is Flaherty inside the 20, down to about the 18-yard line. As uh, he was brought down from behind by Trayvon Allen, the sophomore, and it'll be second down upcoming. You know, Pete, the most noticeable thing when you look at this Chieftains team, most of the guys whose names we're calling are seniors. And, you know, two years ago when we covered this team, these same guys were sophomores. And a lot of them were playing, but they struggled. And now you see success comes with experience, and that's what's holding back this Buckley team. Pass to the left side is complete. A flag down on the play as inside the 10-yard line go the Chieftains. But uh, that's the one that's going to be coming back as a holding penalty will negate the advance, which would have set up a first and goal by Banks. But instead, it's coming back, and the Chieftains will be backed up beyond their 25-yard line, or 25 of Buckley, that is. The holding call will move it to the Buckley 30-yard line. Yeah, again, Pete, to establish what I was saying there, though, I mean, you look at these guys. I mean, you've got Jones. He's a senior. Richam's a senior. Uh, Flaherty's a junior with experience, and Dorfman is a senior. I mean, these are the critical guys, and they've got a lot of experience. And, you know, you put it all together, and you have a, the chance to make an impact and find your way in the state playoffs as a senior. Yeah. And that's the goal, obviously, and that's something definitely within their reach. A win here tonight, a win in Newington, a win against Hall, and that's what they would do. Here's Flaherty off and running again inside the 15 down to about the 11 yard line showing terrific balance terrific persistence as well to stay on his feet and another big play could be negated by a flag down on the play and another holding call against connor so that big hole that was opened up for flaherty created by a holding penalty now peter i am not a conspiracy theorist mind you but listen to the words that i'm going to say we did not see a single call other than a face mask, which is egregious in the entirety of the first half. We have now seen consecutive holding calls as Connor is approaching that magical number uh, of 50 points. Is it on purpose? I don't know, but I find it very intriguing that those holes have been just as big in the first half as the second half, and yet those flags seem to be magically coming out. Coincidence? Not. I don't believe. I, I agree with you. I agree with you 100% on that kiss. Picked up by Flaherty. He wants to make something out of nothing, and his pass is intercepted, and Buckley has it at midfield. So that play was doomed from the start. It was a bad snap. Flaherty had to run for his life, and when he picked it up, he threw it hurriedly on the run, and it was intercepted and brought back near midfield. So Buckley able to dodge a bullet there. And getting it back are the Bulldogs, first and 10, near the 49-yard line. Yeah, again, I mean, it was a bad snap, and he compounded it by forcing the throw, and it led to a turnover. But again, I mean, I hate to sound um, like a skeptic, but this is the second game I've done in which the Cochran rule has been potentially there, and both times I've seen a similar trend with the officiating, so it's something to pay attention to. And I think it goes against uh, the entire value of the game. I don't think that's what the game is, the spirit of the game is meant to be played that way, which is why I'm against the Cochran rule to begin with. But um, it's another thing to look forward to here as the game goes on in the second half. Warren on a first down. Gets into the Connor territory as the clock runs inside of eight and a half minutes to play here in the third quarter. And we'll see if uh, Mr. Bartlett and the officiating staff opt to keep that clock running at some point throughout uh, the rest of the contest. Ball spotted at the Connor 49. It'll be second down and eight yards to go as the uh, clock has stopped on the field so that the official could go and talk with the coaching staff on the far side of the Buckley Co-op team. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good start to the second half for Buckley. They were pinned deep in, and Connor looked like they were going to score again. They draw a couple of penalties and then force the turnover, and now uh, they have an opportunity to cut into this deficit on the, their first drive of the second half. It looks like they're going to have Lyons spread out as a wide receiver as they come out with trips here for the first time tonight to the right side, Pete. And Lyons lined up in the slot to that right side. One wide out to the far side. And here's Ward with the fake, and he keeps and goes straight ahead and gains perhaps a yard. 
It's the third time that he's tried that type of a fake and has gone absolutely nowhere each time. Connard, led by Bentz, able to plug the hole and bring him down after about a one-yard advance. Yeah, I like the idea of the play call. I mean, you, you spread Lions out, you try to get the attention out there, you fake the quick screen, and then you run the draw. The problem is the interior blocking didn't get that impact block, and if the interior doesn't block, I don't care who's running the football, you're not going to have success. And Bentz has been one of those guys that we've called tonight. Had a sack earlier. He's six foot three, 185 pound junior, and certainly one of the impact players on this side of the ball for the Connor Chieftains. Third and six. Straight drop for Ward. Wants to throw a deep ball deep down the left side. It's underthrown and incomplete. Pass was intended for Gerald Strums. But back in coverage was Real that time. Carson Real actually had a better play on the ball than the intended receiver, Strums. And that'll be incomplete, and it'll be fourth down and six. Yeah, we've seen that play at least three times now. A third and long drop back and throw it as far as we can directly in front of a Chieftain defensive back. And uh, this time it looks like they're going to punt. They weren't blessed with the punt interception as they have in the last two series. So they're going to try to punt it. And uh, it looks like Jones is going to get another opportunity maybe to make a play in special teams here with a 49-14 lead. And he's standing back at his 22-yard line getting set to return the punts. Good snap this time. Again, another short kick. It's a wobbly kick, angled to the far side, hits at the 30 and takes a Buckley roll inside the 25, and it's going to go dead near the 22-yard line, and that's where the Chieftains will put it in play. First down and 10. A reminder that you're invited to the third annual tailgate party presented by the War Chief Sports Council. Join us for the celebration of high school athletes Saturday, November 14th from 6.30 to 10.30 at West Hartford's Town Hall Auditorium. Cost is $50 per person with a $20 charge for head coaches. Includes food and drinks, catering by Russell's Entertainment, and a silent auction. Purchase your tickets today at warchief.net slash tailgate.html. First down carry. There's Richam back in the game for the first time in a long time, and he's going to be thrown down for a loss inside the 20-yard line. And it'll be second down and long. So Richam had a big run early in the first half, and uh, they've kept him on the sideline for much of that first half. Yeah, Pete, it shows you that the Connor coaching staff isn't overall satisfied with the entire effort of this game. There's been some sloppiness mixed in here. A lot of good plays, but I think they know the, the difference in talent amongst these teams, and some of the mistakes that they've made, um, they want to fix, and I think they want to get some more work with the number ones to prepare them for the stretch drive and, and hopefully a drive towards the state playoffs. And they're not going to be able to make those state playoffs if they make some of the mistakes they made tonight. So I th think it's a great opportunity for Richmond to work with the ones and have another successful drive here in the second half. Yeah, good observation, and it's absolutely uh, correct. They want to work on some things, get some things squared away, because if they come out with the same type of effort, aside from the big plays, even on the road at Newington uh, next week, it's going to be a much taller order. There goes Richam, breaking into the secondary, far sideline at the 40, at the 30, a foot race down that far sideline, he cuts back at the 10, 5, touchdown, Connor. Richam taking it to the house from 78 yards. And that makes it 55-14 to 14 as he was off to the races down the far sideline. Yeah, you got to feel for um, Lyons there, for Andre Lyons. He chased him down the whole way, and he got right on his heels at about the 20-yard line. I don't know if he pulled a hammy or if Richam's cut just got him, but or if he just ran out of gas from playing every play in this football game. Either way, an explosive run by the senior running back. And now I think he'll probably be done for the night. And the kick is on the way, and it is good. So Cahill, 8 for 8, and the countered lead is now 42 at 56 to 14. Connor football has two alumni entering Halls of Fame later this month. George Beaudry, who served as an assistant football coach and head wrestling coach, will be inducted into the Connecticut High School Coaches Hall of Fame on Thursday, November 19th. Beaudry's wrestling teams won five state titles, 13 league championships, 
and were 235, 30 and 2 during his 18 seasons at the helm. And also, congratulations in advance to Bill Condon, who played football and lacrosse while a student athlete at Connor, class of 77. He goes into the Connecticut chapter of the U.S. Lacrosse Hall of Fame on Saturday, November 21st. He's one of five people to be inducted that evening, and in addition to being Connor's head lacrosse coach since 1992. Connor also saw Condon coach freshman football for 18 years from 1988 to 2005. So George Beaudry, Bill Condon, congratulations to both of those fine gentlemen going into your respective halls of fame. So the Chieftains getting set to kick off. 56 to 14. Connor in front. We're getting a little taste of what it's like to be like the Southington Blue Knights tonight, putting up uh, these kind of points on the board, Chris. I mean, 56 points. I don't know that they have more than 30 yards through the air. It's pretty impressive stuff as the uh, kickoff is taken and fumbled, and this time it goes into the end zone for a touchback, and uh, they will start on the 20-yard line. Well, the Bulldogs with 537 left to go here in the third quarter. The 56 points, the high watermark this season for the Chieftains, who had 49 in the loss to Glastonbury back on September 18th. No, I'm sorry. They actually had 59, so one more touchdown will eclipse what they did against Manchester a couple of weeks back. So 59 and 56, the two highest point totals for your Chieftains so far this year. So at the 20-yard line, here's Buckley. Starting things off, first down and 10. Ward is the quarterback. Lions lining up far to the near side. And straight ahead with Ward, and he's got some room crossing the 30. Has first down yardage out to about the 32-yard line. Gained a dozen, and it'll be a first down and 10. Kind of suspicious-looking Olay defense that time by the Chieftains. Yeah, Pete, it really looked like the uh, seas parted there. I don't know what's going on. Again, uh, we'll watch more here and not judge on one play. We'll see what happens moving forward. There was a lot of aggression there on the defensive front. First down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Here's Ward again running to his right. And this time, the, the defense up to the challenge, Tim Simplicio. A sophomore, Phil's little brother, making the stop that time at the 32. No gain, second and long. That was more like a great job by the young sophomore taking advantage of his playing time and making a play from the defensive line to the backfield. They'll call it a loss of one, but for all intents and purposes, it was a tackle for a loss. They called it no gain, actually. It was a nice play, though, by the defensive lineman. Only a sophomore making a play on a Friday night. That's an exciting time for any 10th uh, grader. Yeah. Just 15 years old and getting a chance uh, to shine just like uh, Big Brother does. Second down and 10 at the 32-yard line. Lions on a slot to the near side. Two wides to either side. Single set back to the left of the quarterback. Back to pass. They complete it to Lions at the 40. Tries to step out of a tackle, and he should have the first down, and he does as he crosses the 45-yard line. Picks up about 13 on the play, and they'll move the chains. First down and 10 upcoming for the Buckley co-op team as Irison made the stop that time for the Chieftains. It's a tricky situation for the Bulldogs because Lions is clearly their most important player, but you wonder if at this point in the game you don't want to give them a little break. The guy's been in on almost every play, both sides of the ball the whole night. Look at him. He's struggling just to make it back to the line of scrimmage you got to think maybe this would be his last drive. I don't know what the numbers game looks like, but I would I would be tempted to take him out just for, the, for his own safety and for the rest of the season. Yeah, they dressed only 31 kids for the game tonight. As the handoff running to his left is Redway, and he's going to be stood up shy of the 45-yard line. Short pickup on the play. It'll be second down. Griffin Reed among those in on the stop that time for the Chieftains. And it will be second down. Zach Bohm still in the game as well. Coming over to make the stop for Connor. Clock running inside of 240 to play in the third. 56-14. Connor in control. 
as we get set for a second down and 10 for Buckley at their own 45-yard line. Two wides to either side. Redway remains in the backfield, standing to the left of the quarterback, Ward. Ward takes a snap, straight drop, back to pass, in trouble, and he's going to be brought down. Loss of about a deuce on the play at the 43-yard line as it was Forsberg leading the charge for the Chieftains. Yeah, nice job there by Forsberg, 6'3", 215 junior, coming in and making a play on the interior of the defensive line, setting up a third down and 12. So we are now under two minutes to play. The official lets us know we're under two minutes to play in the third quarter and Connor is leading this one 56 to 14 on 42 unanswered points by the Chieftain. Third down and long upcoming at the 43 yard line. Back to pass is Ward. Has time. Throws a deep middle intended for Lions. Incomplete almost intercepted at the 31 yard line. Trying to pick it up his shoestrings with Zach Reed that time, along with Bobby Irison. They were both back there in coverage, and it'll be fourth down and 12 at the 43. We talked a couple of times about Connor going to Newington next week. Doesn't get any easier for Buckley as they finish out the schedule. They play host to the Southington Blue Knights a week from tomorrow, 12 noon start. And uh, that'll be uh, quite interesting to say the least as they get set to punt for the fifth time tonight will the Bulldogs bad snap good job to get the kick away hits at the 40 yard line it takes a Buckley roll and goes dead at the 31 or 32 yard line yeah, you called flags after flags after flags early in the third quarter, and then the punter gets hit like that and nothing. Well, the thing is, there's no, uh, there's no personal, there's no penalty if the punter gets hit and the punt gets blocked. But he didn't signal that the punt got blocked. It looked like it should have because he was back there. Yeah. If you hit the punter, it's got to be a 15-yard penalty. But <laughs> you know, maybe these guys have dinner plans as well, Pete, and maybe they're uh, thinking about uh, just keeping this thing moving here because they. Uh, they missed an opportunity to throw a fight. It was a great job getting the punt away, though, and he got actually it was probably his best punt of the of the night. It might have been about 25, 28 yards. Putting uh, some backups in here. Looks like looks like the backup quarterback Jack Moore is in for the first time tonight. And he starts at the 31 yard line for the Chieftains with 73 seconds to play here in the third, and a first down handoff and waiting right there the Buckley uh, defensive front. Carter ran the ball that time as he's the 5'7", 165-pound senior, and he met up directly with the interior of that defensive front for the Bulldogs and threw him down for a two-yard loss. Rodriguez making the hit that time for the Bulldogs. will be second down and a dozen back at the 29. Second down and off to the near side and out across the 30 to about the 33-yard line. As the running back was dragged down from behind, Maine was the ball carrier for the Chieftains. And coming over was Brown to make the stop. And it'll be third down and long as we wind down inside of 25 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Yeah, they're just going to let the clock run here. And they get one more playoff as they run to the near side. And that was Brown again with the tackle as Maine was the ball carrier. He was wrapped up, and that's the way the third quarter will end. So 36 minutes in the books here at McKee Stadium, and your score at the end of three. Connor, 56, and the Buckley Weaver co-op team, 14. We'll come back with fourth quarter action right after this on WHC-TV Channel 5 presented by the War Chief Sports Council.
for joining us for West Hartford High School Sports here on WHC TV. Pete Lamoureux along with Chris Grace. Jen Evans leads our crew. Meredith West, Diana Chin helping with the broadcast tonight. As the punt takes a sidewinding bounce inside the 35-yard line at about the 32. And that's where it'll be first down and 10 upcoming. Connor will get to the 750 winning percentage. They'll get to 6 and 2. As we said, they started the night ninth in Class Double L. The top eight qualify for the postseason, which begins on December 1st with quarterfinal action. And since two of the teams in front of them, Darianne and Staples, clash in the weeks to come, you know that if Connor can run the table and if you do all the math, they're going to qualify for the state tournament. And you just hope that they don't run into the FCAC again like they have a few times in the past and did not get out of the opening round. First down carry. They go straight ahead. That's Ward, the ball carrier. And he's brought down by a combination of counter tacklers. Got back to the line. It's going to be second down and long. And I don't mean to sound like a, a pessimist talking about their recent performances in the state tournament because the fact is just to qualify is a, a terrific accomplishment something that they should be proud of but time for them to get in there and make some noise whether it's them or Hall in past years haven't met up with success yeah I mean that's you know that's the that's the next step right it's a tough it's a tough thing winning in the playoffs for years Southington struggled with that it's only lately that they've experienced some success and uh, speaking of Southington, right now they are leading, but it is fairly tight, 27 to 13. It was actually, they were trailing for a significant portion of this game against East Hartford tonight. Now they lead 27 to 13 in the second half. Second down carry. There's Strums. Good persistence, but finally brought down near the original line of scrimmage. So it'll be third down. And long, upcoming here for Buckley. No gain on that last play. They'll spot it middle of the field at about the 34-yard line. They had one other tough game. That was against Glastonbury. But uh, East Hartford's a pretty pretty good ball club. And uh, been very, very competitive. Over 500 squad. And uh, good for them that uh, they've stuck with the number one team in the state and stayed within two touchdowns of them. Third down and eight at the 34-yard line. Lions lines up in a slot to the right side. They send two wide outs to either side. Basically the same formation they've used for about 75% of their plays tonight. Here's Ward running to the near side. He's a deep downfield, and the pass is incomplete. He was intending his pass for Goff Jordan, the junior wide out, and the pass was too long, and it'll set up a fourth down and eight. Jordan's been the second-best receiver throughout the season for Buckley, but uh, he's been... Kind of quiet tonight. Lions, their main man, has been the main target for uh, who's ever played quarterback, whether it's been Saylor or Ward. Haven't seen a lot of Kevin Saylor, who's called the uh, best player by his uh, head coach on his team. Been out since week one with a foot injury that he sustained against New Britain. Played tonight, went about, oh, I'd say 10 or 12 snaps, and uh, haven't heard or seen of him since then. Yeah, it's just one of those games, right? I mean, teams probably aren't going to take chances with guys that could potentially get hurt, and this is no different. A couple other interesting scores. Glastonbury leads New Britain 34-12, to and Bloomfield topped Northwest 34 to nothing. That's a final. Thanks to Chris for the out-of-town update. Bad stab, good kick, decent roll, and finally picked up at the 39-yard line. And about a half dozen on the return at the 45 and that's where Connor will put it in play first down and 10 with 941 to go in the fourth quarter and you have to question why we're not in the running time factor at this point yeah that's that's kind of my whole point I mean it's such an arbitrary number this 50 number so if a team wins by 49 they're classy but if they win by 50 they're running it up right I mean if you're winning by 37 you don't run the clock but if you're winning by 44 you do I mean it's completely arbitrary once Connor took a three score lead in the second quarter this game was all but over yet we go through the same type of protocols just because it's an arbitrary system that they came up with 
to uh, prevent teams from running up the score. There's other and better ways to accomplish that than by setting a weird random. It's not even a football number. 50 is not even a football number. They could have made it 49 if they wanted to do that. Seven touchdowns and seven extra points. Exactly right. Timeout on the field. At the 45, first and 10, 940, one to go. As Buckley asking for and receiving the timeout. Again, one more reminder about the third annual tailgate party presented by the War Chief Sports Council. It's a celebration of high school athletes, and it'll take place from 6.30 to 10.30 p.m. one week from tomorrow night, Saturday, November 14th, at the West Hartford Town Hall Auditorium. Costs $50 per person, $20 if you're a head coach. Includes food and drinks, the catering by Russell's. There's entertainment, a silent auction, and much, much more. Purchase your tickets today at www.war.chief.net slash tailgate.html or mail your payment to the War Chief Sports Council, P.O. Box 270-574, West Hartford, 06127. Again, it's P.O. Box 270-574, West Hartford, Connecticut, 06127. First down, keeper. As he spins his way across the 45 to about the 46-yard line. Short pickup on the play. And it'll be second down and long. Yeah, the Chieftains have all their backups in now. Jack Moore, the six foot one ninety sophomore signal caller, kept it that time for a minimal gain. It'll be second and nine, and it's an interesting opportunity now for Connor to work some of these younger guys, try to get them some experience uh, at the highest level. Moore takes a snap. Moore runs to his right, crosses the forty five, and he's thrown down at the forty seven yard line. Giovanni Watkins brought him down. And it'll be third down and long. That's a heck of an effort, Vesson tackle in a 42-point game. I know you're trying to make your mark. You're trying to solidify your spot on the defense. But even so, got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah. I mean, you got it. You got to. And this is all on tape. So all these guys are trying to make plays on both sides because that's there for permanent reasons. So you got to make a play if you can. Moore with the play action fake and the toss to his left and a short pickup across the 45 to the 46 yard line. They'll just keep the clock running. And it'll be fourth down. And the punting unit comes on for the Connor Chieftains. Redway and Strums going back deep to receive the punt from Simplicio couple of punts on the night and again good special teams throughout this year you got a kicker who's got six field goals and has made every single extra point 40 plus on the season you got a punter averaging 35 pretty good high school kicking game yeah I mean and that, the, that's hidden yardage right I mean a lot of high school teams don't do that well as he gets this punt off and it's another beauty it's gonna bounce at the 25 and spin dead and he actually tries to field it at the 25 as four or five Chiefs, Chieftains greet him there. But yeah, Pete, like you were saying, I mean, the special teams is the kind of thing that in high school you very rarely see great special teams. Because soccer's in the same season as football here in Connecticut. That eliminates a lot of the kickers right off the go. And uh, if, you, if you have it, it's a huge advantage. We saw Southington three weeks ago, and their kicking game was none too impressive. We didn't see their punter, so we're not sure if they have a punter. <laughs> But their, 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 uh, their place kickers were just average, I would say. And, and that can happen. So if you have the ability to really make up for it, I mean, that could be a two, three score difference in a game just solely on special teams. I mean, all those extra points that you're making and other teams are having to go for two, I mean, that's not that could change the score. I mean, you could win a game in overtime instead of lose a game in overtime by a point. Yeah. As Connor proved earlier this year with the win against East Hartford 23-20 on Cahill's third field goal of that night. Half the six field goals that he's kicked on the season. First down running play as Redway runs to his right and he runs into a swarm of red tacklers at about the 28-yard line. Gain of a deuce. It'll be second down and eight as the clock winds down inside of seven minutes to play here in the contest. Connor defense 
pitching a second half shutout, 17 plus minutes, keeping Buckley off the board after they got into the end zone twice in that opening half. Ward fakes the handoff, keeps it, gets to about the 30 yard line. He spun around and thrown down right at that 30. So that'll be third down and about five upcoming. Maybe a little less than that, depending on the spot. Tim Simplicio, the sophomore who we called on the earlier series, checks off the field after he got to play about seven or eight plays here tonight. Bulldogs in no hurry. Third and five at the 30-yard line. They line up Jordan wide to the near side. Lyon still in the game. Slot right. Throw to the near side. Complete to Strums. Out of a tackle at the 30, and he fights his way near first down yardage up at the 35-yard line. Ryan Orlowski, another sophomore on the field, made the stop that time for the Chieftains, and it will be a first down for the Bulldogs. You know, Strums was the guy who made the first big impact play for the Bulldogs early on. He took that little screen pass and took it to the house, a big gainer. It was actually a 57-yard catch and run, and we haven't called his name many times since then, Pete, and it seems like they maybe, I mean, they were, it was an uphill battle to begin with, but they maybe went to the well a few too many times with Lions and maybe could have spread the ball out a little bit more for the success of their uh, offensive game plan here tonight. So after the first down, they keep the drive alive, first and 10, out at the 35-yard line. Straight ahead handoff, good power running across the 35 to about the 39. About a four yard advance. And it'll be second down upcoming. Another nameless man on the roster. A number 38, and we don't have one. Second down and six as we wind down to four and a half minutes to play here in the contest. Ward takes a snap, throws to his right, puts it in the hands of Lyons. He spins out of a tackle at the 40, still going, and is brought down finally as he's corralled and thrown to the turf at about the 43-yard line. It'll be third down and short as Lyons makes another catch and a good individual effort to try to break out of tackles. Kid's going to sleep well tonight, that's for sure. As you said, Chris, he's been on the field almost every play here tonight. Yeah, I mean, this, this is the tough part, right, about having a team with a smaller roster is that you have nowhere else to turn. You want to have positive results, and to do that, you have to let your best players play the whole game, even when it means literally the whole game. Third down and one. Here's Ward on the keeper. Has the first down and more as he crosses into Connor territory. And now actually brought back at about the 50-yard line. But he's got uh, the first down. And move the chains again. You know, they were successful, Chris, with the big plays in the first half. We never really saw any type of a sustained drive. Maybe the first time tonight uh, since the first quarter that they've gotten two first downs in the same drive. And again, a lot of that is the fact that Connors cleared their bench. They have a lot of reserves and a lot of underclassmen on the field. But again, speaks to the resiliency of this team as well. Buckley just won't quit no matter how tired they are, no matter how overmatched and overexperienced uh, they might be. First down and 10 for the midfield stripe. Straight drop and a long throw deep down the right side by Ward. It's incomplete. And the closest man to the ball were countered chieftains down that far sideline. It'll be second down and long. You know, I don't want to disparage the guy, but I, I used to, when I first got started, I used to do some peewee football games. And when you would see a peewee team throw the football, it's kind of what it looked like. I mean, they would literally just go back and throw it as far as they could, regardless of where their receiver was or the corners are. And that's kind of what it's looked like when Ward's been back there. And it, it's maybe something to look at moving forward. I, I don't really... S I don't think that I would be calling deep passes with him too often. Here's Strumps in the counter territory, crossing the 45 to about the 43-yard line. Ryan Orlowski, the sophomore in the counter lineup, made the stop. And it'll be third down and about three at that counter 43-yard line. Mike 
Third down, and the clock running inside of two and a half to play. Connor to six and two with the win. And they will be no worse than ninth in the Class Double L playoff picture at weekend's end. Buckley with the setback, falling to 0 and 8. They have the game next week against Southington, and then they play their traditional game on Thanksgiving against Hartford Public. Here's Ward running for his life, and he's going to be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Able to escape from the initial countered penetration and turn what would have been a loss into another first down. So the third first down of this drive as they move the chains, spot the ball far side at the countered 39-yard line. So a little bit of momentum for this offense going forward. Scored on the last play of the game last week against Manchester as uh, Coach Ortiz said, hey, these kids, they play the full 48 minutes. He goes, we may be undermanned and underexperienced, but we play from gun to gun. And, and honestly, I'm not just sugarcoating this or saying this. I mean, they've played hard the entire game. That's been noticeable. They've tackled. They've done everything. They just haven't been in positions to make plays that often. And, and you know, they're outmanned. And that's what we've saw, seen here. Is a nice pass is completed for a gain of eight yards. That time it was Lions playing quarterback throwing it to Ricky Martinez for a nice game. It'll be second and short. And like you said, Pete, it's been a good drive here. They've they've marched down the field and mixed in passing and running and high percentage passing plays. Maybe they missed some opportunities earlier to approach it this way and just look for the big shot play a little too often. Yeah. 45 seconds left. Second down and four. Here's Lyons throwing to his right. Has his man complete inside the 30. Right near first down uh, yardage once again. As the clock winds down inside of 30 seconds to go. If they don't have the first down, they do, so they'll stop the clock to uh, mark it. And once they put it in play, the clock starts running again at the 28-yard line. First down and 10. Lions hands off. Right side with running room. Far sideline. Inside the 15, inside the 10, inside the 5, near the goal line. And they're going to say the running back stepped out of bounds inside the five-yard line. With 12 seconds to go. So here's Buckley knocking on the door for what could be their first and only second-half touchdown. Low snap, fielded by Lyons. Wants to run to his left, tries to cut to the near sideline, and he will hit the pylon. Touchdown, Buckley. Comes with 3.8 seconds to go. Andre Lyons takes his 6'4 frame into the end zone to make it 56-20. to That will finalize the score. Yeah, you saw right there, Lyons is a pretty gifted physical athlete, and he was able to completely outrun the younger Connor defense that time. He got to the perimeter and just used his length and his speed and his athleticism to get to that pylon. And good for Buckley. They deserve a silver lining on this game. They fought hard. They made it much more competitive than we thought at times in the first half. And they've shown great resiliency. And that poor guy, Lyons, I mean, if anyone deserves to find the end zone after an, a, a night's worth of hard work, it's number five for the Bulldogs. Oh, yeah. So they'll go for two. Lyons takes the snap, hands off. They try to go straight ahead, and it's going to fail. So time for one more play with Connard in front, 56 to 20. It's another home win for Connard. They have one more left on the home schedule. As uh, they'll finalize the regular season against Hall. But so far this season, the only home blemish was against Southington, and no dishonor there as they were beaten 53 25. A game, though, that they kept very competitive for a long time. It was a 19 16 ball game with about a minute and a half to go in the first half. And just as they did against Hall, Southington breaking it open with a couple of late first half touchdowns, and they were well on their way. 
So while that was a pretty good measuring stick for Matt Sersasimo's team, they certainly were competitive for two and a half quarters that night. I think that bodes well as they go forward. Out of town? Yeah, I got to go. Glastonbury at one point led 34 to nothing over the Golden Hurricanes. It is now 34 to 28 with 3.39 left in the fourth quarter. Wow. So your team making a comeback. Pulling away against East Hartford. And, you know, again, with, with Southington. They play very, very well and usually uh, keep things competitive. The other teams, if they play decent teams, Hall, Southington, East Hartford tonight, can hang with uh, Southington for two and a half quarters or so. And then usually it's the Blue Knights pulling away down the stretch. So here's the Buckley kickoff. Yeah, yeah why not? Nah, they kick it deep. And the return. Big return by the Chieftains. They get out near 45, and that's the way the game will end. Final score, Connard 56, and the Buckley Co-op team 20, as the Chieftains extend their record to 6-2 and two with the victory. Give Buckley a lot of credit, as we talked about here, Chris. Pretty representative effort by them, but uh, in the end, too much talent, too much physicality, too much experience, and it all added up to the Connor victory. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for this this Buckley Weaver co-op football team because it's really easy when you're 0-7 to approach a game like this and just give nothing and have no heart and no fight. And they were the opposite. They actually led this game. Um, they they scored two touchdowns on well-executed, great great play calls and great plays they fought throughout and although it wasn't against the starters for the entirety of the second half the Connard starters went there for a while and they they held strong and 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 you know they can hold their heads up I mean football is a game of numbers and the team with less players typically is going to have an uphill climb but they did a pretty good job and it was a pretty impressive uh, effort by coach Ortiz's entire squad and they should be proud of their efforts tonight yeah, absolutely and on the other side of things Mats or Sasebo's team goes to 6-2 and two with the win. Got a big effort tonight from uh, Dorfman with his uh, hat-trick performance three times in the end zone. Flaherty, a couple of big runs for scores as well. Wasn't the usual countered aerial attack. They didn't beat them through the air tonight. They kept it on the ground mostly, had the big plays, and uh, also had the one big play on special teams to pull away for the victory. So once again, a reminder to join us for our next football broadcast. It takes place on November 21st. It's the Battle of West Hartford right here at McKee Stadium. Connard playing host to Hall. Chris and I will have the broadcast for you beginning with the kickoff at 1 o'clock on the 21st. Thanks to the co-presidents of the War Chief Sports Council, Paul McConnell and Dennis Swanton. Also thanks to our fine crew led by Jen Evans at the studio. Meredith West, Diana Chin, and all of the rest of the folks here doing an excellent job. Thank you for your yeoman effort tonight. And also thanks to our good buddy Bill Watson on the PA. Does his usual excellent job, and we're able to feed off one another for the broadcast here tonight. Chris, great job as always. We'll thank you and everybody else associated with the telecast tonight as the Connor Chieftains pull away for the victory. Until next time, for Chris Grace, Pete Lamoureux saying thanks for watching the Connor Chieftains victory tonight over Buckley. And from West Hartford, so long, everybody.
Yo, coach. 